you're doing this, Franklin, right? Yeah, this is our, I'm just, I'm still looking for Ella and now I'm looking for Gabby to get her back in. <laughs> okay, well, this looks really good here. Oh, it looks great. This is terrible. If Ella and Gabby aren't in. <laughs> Yeah, I blink. Um, Ella is the first one, right? Yeah. Well, we um, can switch her down the road. Mean? Ella is the first one, right? Yes. Yeah. Got to figure out what order I want to read these things in. Did you have to fill out something, Laurel, or did you just press the button that said join? I just didn't press a button I hit the yeah the join and then the link so here's Gabby's back now we're just we're, I'm looking for oh Ella, how nice for Ella. hey Gabby can you hear us oh it's character audio still connecting so just give her a moment it should it should connect okay she <clears> should <throat> take she should put up her veil don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's distracting. You can't see your face. What a great picture. I know, Mike took that, I think a couple of years ago. That yeah, looks that is great, the whole thing. Franklin, you did an amazing job. Yeah, I, this is actually yeah. from last year's because I can see the little thing I made in the back. <laughs> oh, it is last year, I, yeah. lo I lose track. <laughs> yeah, Mike took the photo, very nice. Oh, I, I see. This is fabulous. Gabby, can you hear us? We can't hear you. So, oh, Gabby, let me unmute. You're, you're muted still. Oh, there there's Ella. Unmute. And then Ella should have just been joined us now. Let me ask to unmute. So hopefully the button's popped up. Gabby is raising her hand. You can't it, hear her. Um, it, she should, I mean, be asking her to unmute, but she, it, I don't know if she sees the button. <laughs> mm. Can you unmute her? I just unmuted. Am I unmute? Yeah, you're unmuted, Ella. Okay, view options. But I've got a picture of Bewitched, Bothered, and Besotted on my yeah, machine. So this, yeah, this that's is the, right. Just the welcome that's okay. Yeah, yeah, this is what we're going to show. And then I was going to start letting the people in because the waiting room is pretty full. Um, okay. And Okay. Now two o'clock, so. <clears throat> Hi, Ella. Hello. Hi. Gabby. Hello, Ella. Gabby. Hi. Gabby. Yes. Your veil, put it up, because it, it's blocking your face. Well, I didn't mind that. Well, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> two hearts. <laughs> Hi, Melanie. Hi there. Gail. Gail. Hello. Yeah. We're here. Let me give you the Hello, Ella. It's Lita here. Can you see me? Hi. Uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> Wait, what's the I didn't see you. You're not, on, not on my picture, anyway. It's yeah, but I hear you later. Hi, Angelica. <laughs> Hi, I don't see you, but I hear you. <laughs> Very yes. good. And, Gabby, and you're going to read, I hear. I did sign up. Ah, uh, and you're such a good reader, and you write such wonderful poems. Melody, Great. Thank you, thank you. And mm -hmm. Anna's in. Let's see, Margaret, Judy. <laughs> How do you see them? I don't see any. Hmm. Do, do gallery view. Oh. Gallery view. Oh, and Marie, right. Marie, 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 we're, we're showing the slideshow, everybody. That's why you can't see everybody, too. Everybody Share screen? Is that ah. the That's the library. We're the ones sharing the screen at the moment. So thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I'm Franklin Escovito. I'm the Community Services Director for the Larkspur Library and Larkspur Recreation. And we'd like to welcome you all. Um, this is an event that we've been doing at the Larkspur Library for a long time in person, but this is our first time doing it virtually since we still cannot meet in person at the moment. So we'll just give it another moment as people are still joining the room um, before we get started, everybody. So say hello to everybody. 
And um, like you said, we'll start in a few minutes. So. Fernando, could you please, I have two people who are asking for the Zoom number and I can't figure it out. I have it. I have it too. I'll bring it to you, Steve. Okay. <laughs> Hi, it's Sue saying hello to everybody. Oh, Hi, Sue. I don't see number, you, Gabby. but I, can't I hear you. Hi, <laughs> panel. Okay. Nice okay. Gail, the Zoom number is 99. Okay, sorry. Hi, Annie. <laughs> Oh, look. Oh. Hi, Ella. Hi. How are you? Mary. Good. How are you? We're all good here. We hope everybody's all good out there. I love your hats, ladies. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my. I was going to say, there's some really fancy hats going on. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mel's hat is fabulous. Hi, Mel. It's Connie Carson. Oh, hi, Connie. Um, I have my screen blocked. I had a bad accident and need plastic surgery on my face. Oh, no. Yeah, well, oh. not anything we want to hear. It's not horrible. But anyway, this finally, I'm able to do this. And uh, you just look great. I love your hearts. Oh, this, that you. hat is wonderful. I'm going to, I'll call you after this is over. I would like if you do that. Thank you. For sure. I've had a bad eight months. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Make that 11 months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unlike anybody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it's going to work. Did that work? Yeah. I, I hope so. I, I don't know. I'm on it and I can see me, but I can't hear me. Everybody. Is they this true? We can hear yes, you. I Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, you guys are like true. wonderful, that group of you standing there, all five of you in a row. Oh, <laughs> goodness. I remember. But can you can see me, right? Yeah. Mm, not yet. Me. And I can only see, uh, oh, hi, Angela. I can only see. You You're feeling this right now top. until I stop sharing the screen. Um, so. <clears throat> oh, I see true I'm now. Yeah, I'm only seeing two. Oh, and I see three. later. Okay. And oh, see there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. So, so we're going to get started here. So we, if, if you ha there aren't reading at the moment, we please remind you all to mute yourselves for the oh, time wow. being. Gabriella. Wow, our granddaughter Gabriella is on from Canada. <laughs> wow. And we did have a lot of people sign up from all across the world oh, today. Yes. So we might have people from Europe. There's yes, Jeff and Judy. <laughs> from yeah. Maine. So did you say we should mute our screens? Yeah, everybody please mute yourselves unless you be speaking. So um, okay. I, again, I'm Franklin Escobedo. I'm the Community Services Director at the Larkspur Library and um, Recreation now. So um, I, I would like to introduce our group. Um, the Women Who Write is a group of five women who, um, who met through their service on the Marin Poetry Center board. 18 years ago, they formed their group and to provide a focus of support to each, each member and her particular writing goals. This annual event at the, at the library began in the, their first year and has been going on for a while. And like I said, this is our first time meeting virtually. So I thank everybody for taking the time to log in this afternoon um, to be here at our first virtual poetry reading. And hopefully next year, if all goes well, we'll be back in person in the library like we normally do. So in 2019, an annual anthology of their work, The Some of Us, was published and is up on Amazon. And after we're done, I'll send out a follow-up email with a link to where you can get it. And they'll be resupplying it. So even though it says unavailable today, more books are on the way. So you'll be able to buy a copy of the book if you haven't already. Um, the group uh, wishes to acknowledge the Marin poetry um, in their role of fostering poetry in Marin. Their website has all the information and events and membership. Um, but I would like to thank um, Laurel, Gabby, Angelica, and Ella, um, I hope I got everybody, for being here today. And I think Ella was going to be our first read. So I'm going to highlight you, Ella, and you'll take over. Unmute. Can you hear me? No. Oh, yeah. You can hear me now? We can hear you now. Yes. Okay. So I'll begin with the first time. Lost in the noise of everydayness is that first love, first kiss, 
first time for anything really. The unbearable sweetness of it, a culmination of our fears and hopes. It's a new reality reaching into the future, the terrifying beauty of what could be. And um, Romancing the Brush is my next one. It was a summer of my more <clears throat> I'll begin again. It was a summer of my romance with the artist and with his paintings, which were enormous, no subject, all predicate, adjectives colliding in a puddle of greens, magentas, and blues. We careened through museums mad for de Kooning and Pollock, the splashed at, dripped on expressions of now. I watched him turn a blank canvas to colors that vibrated each other, thrilled by the idea of creation. I didn't see how he wanted me primed and ready, object to his verb. Later, I discovered mixing the hues opposite on the color wheel created beautiful shadow. How I could lay down pigment as primary and raw as any abstract expressionist. How doing it myself without modifiers would open for me the world. The next one, back again. Yeah. On the radio, Spheris is Eros, and I'm young again, back on Mykonos, sand, kelp forests, cutting water in long, short strokes, bubbles bursting into light. I begin to dance in the old way, and I'm back 2,000 years dressed by rhythm in black and ancient garb. I'm in a chorus of crones, arms linked, clinging, uh, circling on a path laid down by lyre's notes. I want a little Aristotle, a little Socrates, but mostly Agamemnon, hockey and strutting, drunk on sun and sea. Um, and after heat and drought, rain, my skin's many mouths open to the damp. Across the road, great pines frame, frame fog that pours over the far hill, clotted cream from the sea. Lovely to sit at my kitchen table, hands curled around a mustard colored cup coffee warming my morning chill. These are moments to cherish, small pleasures to, wa to wall out the day's indignities. Across from me, my sweetheart of 50 years, the uncertainty of his cancer. He's reading the paper, channeling the outside world in. I want these moments sacred, soft shush of rain, polishing everything, the glass tabletop reflecting light, my arms, the cup, everything floating up shimmering, insubstantial. Substance and shadow. We swim over river bottom, mud and grasses, substance and shadow, inside the moment, yet outside looking in. Is it you I love or how we fit inside that love? Two pine needles spinning slowly, hooked together, reach the lip of the falls, then dip into foam and vanish. Next one is where you reside. Where do I stop and you begin? My hand on your arm disappears into shadows of your sleeve. At night, edges vanish as our bodies cleave. When I see you, everything outside unfolds inside me, sight, smell, touch, and you are in me as real as I create you. Such an intimate thing, you contract or blossom with my additions and subtractions. If from inattention you are diminished, I'd have only myself to blame. And my last poem is, is actually a true story, something that happened to me about roughly 25, 30 years ago. Seal. There was the, and, and, and before I start it, it's kind of an interspecies, it's still a love story, but it's kind of an interspecies, an unusual interspecies love story. Seal. There was the usual sea smell of fish and oil slicks that night. And you've seen how waves lift up their round black arms and give the wan moon back its cool light. They want to spill over, cross boundaries, press against rocks, handing them the slippery moon, taking it back. You know how that looks. I walked on a path beside the sea, an awk, awk, awk echoed toward me like a quick breeze over water, like the smell of the sea turned sound. Suddenly, there he was, four feet offshore, natty as night in his shiny furs. I answered him awkwardly at first, then getting it right. We talked a long time. Maybe he thought I was one of them in my steel black clothes. He paced aquatically, eyes holding, holding me. 
I sang his siren song and for a while I could feel down into all that was wet and salty in me. He followed as I passed, passed Bafano's seal statue, turned when I turned and kept up his end of the conversation. At the park, I squatted on a step near the water. He swam up close and we were quiet. What could we do, rub noses or flanks? We were reaching past difference. We were making love. We each awked the last few, two times then he dipped under that thick black syrup, popped up a hundred feet offshore for a last look and was gone, leaving me a bit of his mystery, a trace of salt taste on my tongue when I wake. Our, our next reader is Laurel Feigenbaum. She's a fine poet who says writing is a way of coping with the often observed world we live in. She is widely published and like most of the writers in our group has served on the board of the Marin Poetry Center. Her first book is called The Daily Observed. And I, uh, you know, she's an, she's an inspiration to all of us because if I can be half as bright and witty as she is at age, when I hit age 90, I will be really happy. <laughs> Please oh. welcome Lauren Fe Laurel Feigenbaum. Oh my God, Ella, thank you. I'll take off my love glasses. Don't have a hat, but that's it. Um, I'm going to, uh, well, love and kindness and all these things can occur even during a pandemic. So that's where I'm starting. And this is called Coronavirus Kindness. A friend brings rolls of toilet paper, a bottle of pur Purell, calls out as she leaves, gold, baby. No hugs or kisses, only gestures that mimic thanks, love, appreciation. I'm buried in boxes of paper napkins, Kleenex, towels, uh, wipes, drowning in cases of water, Lysol, alcohol. A neighbor knocks on the door or calls. Do you need anything? I'm going to the store. Six feet apart visits from a grandson or daughter bearing gifts, a plaid mask, books, banana bread, ice cream, chicken soup, leftovers, along with admonitions of do's and don'ts, isolate, stay home, disinfect. My grandson says, I'll bring whatever you need, ASAP. No risk taking, I want my children to know you. His tender caring warms me as I think, but don't say, you'd better hurry. And actually they did. <laughs> June is gonna be the, the date, the bir new birthday date. And um, well, and this is from our, our book that you see out there, The Some of Us. And this is called Words and Music. If this were a practice life, in the next I'd croon and scat like Ella, get down and dirty with F Eta, Etta, glide across the floor with Fred or Jean, improvise with Basie, score like Sondheim or Hammerstein. In my spare time, I'd cultivate a garden, be fluent in Spanish, make souffles like Julia, lounge, putter, fritter, bask, like peanut butter, have a big brother, add a lover. <laughs> and uh, let's see, where's my, and this one is called Ode to a Great Granddaughter. Rosalind Jane, you came. The soft down of your cheeks, gassy smile, milky scent, wobbly brunette head nestled on my chest. Eyes open, looking around. What is it like to breathe air? Hiccup, sneeze, bellow. Hear a dog bark, be licked, sniffed. And your flailing arms and legs, luxuriant stretches, the reaching open oval of your mouth like a small bird's eager to feed. And on the fullness of life, your mother, my granddaughter nursing, and the memory of my mother holding your mother. And 
Well, this I'm reading from this chapbook called Matrimony. And that's, that's a wedding picture, as you can see. And uh, my husband passed away um, a little over four years ago. So this is an elegy. Perhaps it was Mozart's magic flute, Papageno's net, the alignment of stars the night we met. On the cusp of a new year, friends gathered, played charades, kissed at midnight and after. The host brother home from medical school, tall, tender, trim, quirky smile, bonny blue eyes and skin, funny and a little drunk. Into my net there'd been Bert, there'd been Bert who stand, danced divinely, George who quartered with yellow roses, and Larry who quoted Keats and Browning, let me count the ways. But this was different, his touch, voice, silky earlobe, like Papagena, my heart sang. From the first hello, like an arrow shot straight to a vital part. I loved him head to toe, always in my heart, my tears, my core, and more here or not. And uh, then I'm gonna read, where am I reading here? Well, I'm gonna end actually with uh, a poem called Letter to Myself. It doesn't seem that long ago, alone in a quiet house, you on call at the hospital, the children out, silence, welcome. As I write this, I am alone again, a widow now with Mozart for company before silence closes in, but I wear no weeds. I think of your touch, the sweetness of it, how it moved me at 21 and still could. Your arm around my shoulder, holding hands, lying next to each other these last months, legs entwined as best we could, your arms across my belly. Calm, peaceful, melting as I had all those 66 years. How greedy can you get? I ask myself. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce M Melanie Mayer, a longtime uh, woman who writes, as well as doing so many other things, a, a, an excellent writer, a good mother, a good wife, a good friend, and all of those things come, and a good uh, dog mother as well. <laughs> All of those things come into her poetry in, uh, in wonderful images and clear and um, devoted to all of those things. And it's really my pleasure to welcome my friend, Melanie Mayer. Oh my goodness. Thank you <laughs> so much. Um, whoops, there we go. I'm going to read two poems from our book, The Sum of Us. This was written um, after a trip to Turkey where I did go across the Anatolian plain after visiting Rumi. My bus crosses the Anatolian plain, scorched yellow, here and there trees break monotony in the distance, your receding figure walks towards mountains shrouded in cloud. I ache to follow, will these tears of mine never stop? My heart, since you left, there is nothing. This is a Valentine to Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers left the neighborhood on February 27th, 2003. I remember how my daughters curled into me, 
Those afternoons we watched him on TV. He'd walk in the door, hang up his jacket, put on that red sweater, take off his street shoes, and pull on sneakers. He lulled us with his starry voice, <clears throat> spoke soothing words into the camera for 30 years. He gently bolstered the American dream. These days, it's eroded. These days, I wish Mr. Rogers would walk in the door again. This poem was written not that long ago. Reflections 2020, an unreasonably warm October 31st, week 31 of the pandemic, four long days before the contentious election. Fortunate living next to a lagoon with lots of outdoor space, space to watch great blue heron, long necked egrets, geese, ducks, and pelicans land. A place to watch an occasional monarch flutter by. Watch my husband, cane in hand, pick apples from our sole fruit tree. This, its last crop of the season. On the dock, our small white dog sits sentinel, ready to bark away swimmers, boaters, and birds. I cherish these quiet moments, my husband, the dog, the beauty of water. Uh, this is a Valentine for my husband at Water's Edge. We drive across the Bay Bridge, 1963, on our way to dine and dance. He says, I know a joke on any subject. I say mermaid. He, definition of a mermaid, too much woman, too much fish to eat, not enough woman to love. A wicked sense of humor, a smooth dancer, opens doors for me, and such a generous heart. I fall fast. I'm 20. He's 34. Years later, when differences plague us, I dream we walk arms linked at water's edge on a white sand beach. 2019, the Sunday I leave for a poetry retreat, he gives me a long kiss and warm hug. Says, these days I feel insecure without you. Yeah. The night I return, he has a dream. I come to him and say, I'm going to live in the wild, somewhere no one needs money at the bottom of a mountain beside a lake. He sees the spot. It looks like a fairyland full of strangers. That morning, I put my arms around him, say, I live here. Mm. And for my last poem, this is a Valentine to that little white dog. <laughs> I wish my dog talked. Imagine what Coco might say. One afternoon on the grass by the blue green lagoon, stretched out side by side, the sun warming us. I think nothing's better than this. She says in a little girl voice, I'm so bored, let's chase Jays. I ask to hear that voice again. Who do you love more, me or him? She evenly divides her time between our laps, so she puzzles this. What do you think, she snorts. We watch nature programs about bats and manatees, Coco beside us. The announcer says manatees are related to elephants. What's an elephant, she asks. We have a small sculpture of one to show her. He explains bats are mammals, but they fly like birds, says Coco. We walk, we go for walks, and when we cross the street, she asks, why? Like the chicken, I answer, to get to the other side. Why do you always bag my business on walks, she drones, but not at home. 
No more sitting quietly by the table until we finish dinner and put a taste in her dish. She whines, hurry, 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 under her breath. No more sitting quietly by our bed while I peel off, pillow turned back the spread. She mutters, you're so slow, so slow. When the doorbell rings, she yells for us, no more barking. At night, she yells, go away. There's no consoling her, fearful of noises and odors outside. Only she hears and smells. Upon reflection, I adore my dog and she me, but there's much to be said for a loving, silent companion. We communicate with one another and dogs have a sixth sense, which we do not, about their owner's moods without words to get in the way. Thank you, and now it is my pleasure to introduce Angelica Quirk, who is an artist, a poet, was a ballet dancer for a number of years and teaches at, um, oh, I forget the name of her school, uh, but um, it's my pleasure to introduce such a wonderful poet, Angelica. Thank you. Can you hear me No. Yes. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, good. Okay. Well, thank you. I teach at the German language school of Marin. So thank you. <laughs> but thank you for the great introduction. Okay. Well, first of all, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. <laughs> and I like to welcome especially my three children, Mia, Juliet, and Matthias. Matthias, my youngest son, was born 15 minutes after Valentine's Day. So how about that? And not only Mike is visible. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and that's when I started writing poetry after he was born. And he turned out to be a very good writer. Okay. That wasn't too lovely. <laughs> Today I waited for you, my muse, flitting from note to note of your harping call. You finally smiled and took off your mask. Now that I met you again, I'll sing of wind and sky. Your eyes, my dream, your lips, my words. Late bloomers, it burst into bloom 22 years late after I had carried it home in a tiny pot of terracotta. terracotta. 22 years late, an explosion of petals and shooting stars, moist and sticky, of sap and scent oozing down the stem, its sweet fermentation intoxicating after years of abstinence. Just like the shiver in my voice, the yearning for his face after distance, after silence. Uh, Mike and I have done many cruises uh, in Europe on different rivers. The Danube is one of my favorite rivers to cruise on. This has a backstory that is not true, okay? Cruising the Danube. Pleasure seekers, geezers, gawkers, hipsters, imposters on a boat, on a trip, cruising down river. We sit midship sipping red wine and laughter. A gypsy girl flirts with my lover from Milk to Vienna, past monasteries where monks had dug tunnels to nunneries. Let's leave behind the mist of century. Let's roam the hills of the Viennese woods where Beethoven lost his hearing but found Elise, where winds rustle with ancient gossip from canopies to sky to castle. River of blue waves, she flows, she heaves, she sighs, she waltzes by. I yearn for Linza Torte in coffee houses, for Viennese balls and try to grasp the essence of loss. 
merrymakers, sun worshippers, widows, spinsters with tickets to the end of the trip to the mouth of the river. They float along and lounge, listening to their own chatter. Lipstick ladies with floppy hats on deck, bathing, inhaling Bloody Mary's rumors and the rush of the river. After he left me for a redhead, the one with the voice of a canary, I decided to get off before sorrow would swallow me and pull me under, before shipwrecked, before the end of the journey, before the Black Sea. My next poem was written for my husband uh, after he came out of the ICU and the hospital. This was about eight years ago, I would say. And I'm going to read just a portion of it, the first stanza and the last stanza. To die, to live. Along white corridors, the smell of disinfectant, Novocaine. I pushed his wheelchair down the ramp for the last time, away from tubal attachments and ticking monitors and nurses in scrubs like floating ghosts with stethoscopes, checking his pulse, his breath, his heart. No machines, no monitors could measure his will to live, to die, to die, to live. When Father Murphy came to anoint the sick, he gave my husband not the last rites, but the holy sacrament. He says he wants an orange. I pick the largest from our tree. I carry it into the house like the sun after a dreary day. He sucks on it. He inhales the scent, the light, the promise of another day, another night. And my last poem is lighter, so it's called Match.com. Any hearts for sale? What is your price tag? 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. Are you willing to commute? He surfed the internet for non-committal relationships. He winked at the blondes and the ones with kinky curls, scanned their photo images and stroked their egos. Then the computer froze. Any hearts for sale? At what cost? A tear here, a virgin touch there, or claustrophobic embraces? He grasps the mouse tightly. He clicked, no response. He clicked again, she emailed him. They met Saturday night. She knew then his wandering eyes, yet fell for him anyway. The next day when she called, only his voicemail answered, now at night she sees his screen stay lit, her eyes staring, then bleeding into the horizontal grid. Thank you. And I like to introduce my very good friend, uh, Gabrielle Rillo. Uh, we did many years of uh, working together on the high school poetry program, which for six years it was. She was just so, knowledgeable about it and so uh, into it that I really enjoyed working with her. And uh, she also started the group here that I have been part of only a few years. And she's just all, always into something. She's just very busy and very talented and a beautiful person and a good poet. So let's welcome Gabby Willow. Am I unmuted? You are. Yes. Yes. Hi, everybody. I just want to also, before I start to read my stuff, um, because Ella didn't get one of us to introduce her, um, I wanted to say a little bit about Ella, who was our first reader, and her poetry speaks the beauty of what kind of a poet she is. She's obviously wonderful, uh, but she's also a very, very long time friend. In fact, it was she that brought me onto the Marin Poetry Center board. Um, and she's a, a, she did this necklace. She's an artist of jewels. She's a jewel of a person. And um, Ella, thank you for everything that you are. So my reading, and thank you, Angelica, for introducing me. My first poem is called 
years in a garden of delight. She emerges from the thistles, all thorn-torn and bedraggled. A moonlit smile shines through smudges of dirt, rich worm-tunneled dirt spread across her face. Delicate petals fall from her tangled hair and the scent of sweet briar rose fills the air. With bent finger, he slowly travels from chin to forehead, forehead, a trail in her weathered skin, tracing creases of their coupled years. She whispers against his gentle hand, wherever we are buried, my love, let it be together, covered deep with this cool, dark soil we love so well. I think I need my glasses. <clears throat> The next poem is Love in the Era of Pandemic. Hmm. It's the pot of chicken soup simmering on the burner with carrots, kale, and pearl couscous. It's the sharing that soup with neighbors who bring arugula and fresh fruit, persimmons from their trees. It is patience at the post office and the line outside the market. Love in the pandemic is this length, the lengthy phone calls giving, giving semblance of a real visit. Solitary walks around a still neighborhood, not minding if those you pass do not return your greeting. It is the garden, putting it to bed at summer's end and witnessing spring's awakening with the jonquils and the Gruber daisy weaving their yellow and orange blossoms. Love in the pandemic is appreciating each single breath, the in and the out of it, and the gratitude for what good, what is good. There it is, something about a bowl that satisfies, oh, I'm sorry, let me start that again. <laughs> there is something about a bowl that satisfies so its ability to hold or be held between two open hands when filled to the brim with a warm, hearty soup, or set upon a dark wooden table holding golden delicious. Something about containing yet remaining open and still each its own in shape and size, recognizing its particular purpose. Something about a bowl that is so completely reliable. Okay. So today is um, my husband's birthday. So my love poems feel especially loving on this day. And so these next poems are in, in our anthology and um, dedicated to that man I love. <laughs> Loving you, when it comes to the words which say exactly what I feel in loving you, to find the words I trust your eyes would, your ears would hear or eyes would read precisely as I mean, with not a single word left out and not an extra word thrown in to gaudy up the easiness of all I feel for you. When it comes to finding words, these words, it is a search I expect to continue my life's remaining days, always seeking the perfect way to say everything I mean when it comes to loving you. And the next is on the honeymoon. I meant to say before we shoved off, that this boat has a few holes. It leaks here and there, and I meant to tell you there is a storm due sometime soon. And oh yes, I meant to say, I do not know how to sail, but I can swim. I meant to ask you, can you swim too? Okay. Saturday afternoon. If I take in the details with every step in this last little jaunt 
from the mound of strawberries needing fresh additions past the bird bearded iris on the downside of their season through the arched jasmine gate, giving it the extra tug to hear the click of its slightly rusted latch, taking in the barren garden beds waiting for planting where oregano is taking claim by the old iron bed rail on hold for some proper use as it leans against the aging fence. Take in the smell from a bucket full of freshly picked lemons to be sent to my sister's Greek neighbor who longs for the days of her own lemon tree back home. And to Ruth who makes special preserves and curds in her tiny kitchen while she longs for her little dog Pierce who began biting her in final stage of aging. If with every step I observe and serve quiet myself down and do the tasks at hand, I believe I will get through any burden that felt too much at the day's beginning. And I would like to end my reading with the poem that you probably heard a few times before, those of you that have attended the library readings. Your Shoes. I look at your shoes today, long and narrow, hold one in my hand, smell the sweet mixture of light sweat and fine leather. My fingers move slowly across the soft, worn surface you've so carefully rubbed with brown kiwi over the years. I've heard your firm footsteps quickly up and down the stairs, across concrete sidewalks, briskly down the street, watched your long long stride across our wooden floors. By the swirl on the ball of the soul, I see most of your turns have been to the right. You've walked life at an angle against the wind. I love you, my left-handed man. So, thank you. Um, I think we at this point are gonna return to, to Franklin and uh, Franklin will uh, invite the, those that have signed up for the open reading. But I also want to say before we do that, um, thanks so much to the Larkspur Library and Franklin in particular and, and Teresa there who've done such a, a tremendous job in helping us, the five of us, the some of us, uh, put this reading together. It's, it's kind of a weird thing to be reading like this. I can't you know, there's, but um, I think it's working and we're, I'm so happy to hear those that are going to read next. And, and you know, the whole, the whole thing about the community read and also those of you who, who've come and, and are not reading, the importance of having witness to our poems because we don't, we write, we write because we can't help writing, but the importance is that we want to have our words have meaning to others. And so um, thank you for listening. And Franklin, are you gonna? Yeah, the, the hard part is, is we want to clap and when we're all muted, we can't clap to, right. to let you know that we loved your poems. Right. So um, again, I, if everybody take a quick bump and unmute yourselves and let's give them a round of applause. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Times five. So, so on our, our first reader that we have on our list is going to be True um, Hines. So let me um, find you real quick, True, and I'll, I'll spotlight you. And you can read your poem. There you are. You're all set, True. Need to unmute. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can hear you. No, you're still, she's still muted, true, so. It's on the bottom, true. Uh, no, she, no, she's okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, my daughter called me from Costa Rica just as we were starting, and believe it or not, I can't find my poem. Could you? <laughs> 
Oh, well, somewhere. So we'll go to the next person and I'll call you back up in a few minutes, okay? Okay, you'll not stop me being first, right? I couldn't hear what you said. Yeah, true. We'll, we'll stop you from being first. So we'll give you a moment. Let me go to the next person in line. So. Oh my God in heaven. So the next person is um, Lita Bushihead. So let me find you, Lita, and then we'll bring you up front. There you are. Hello. And you're good. Thank you to both Franklin and Ella and everyone else involved in putting this wonderful thing together. I didn't realize what a dry time this pandemic has been. And so to be immersed in poetry, but especially in love, has been a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And so I have one small piece to add today. And its title is Once Upon a Time. I could have married Rich. Might have married grand, but I wanted you with the funny wide feet that walk steady and so well grounded on this earth. We stepped into each other and found ourselves as in a fairy tale, standing on a golden hill in the warmth of our own private sun, surveying the sky bowing trees, the awaiting city, the fabled kingdom of ever after. Dreams and stories end, but until then, we laugh every day in thanksgiving to whoever had the idea that in this phenomenal world, there should be joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next up is Elizabeth Weaver. I hope you're on here. There you are. Hi. Hello. This has been so wonderful. Hi, Angelica. This has Hi. been so wonderful. I've loved you. Hi, Gabby. <laughs> I only can only see six of you. Um, but I'm just like so happy that this was on Zoom this year. I haven't always been able to come ever. <laughs> but this makes it accessible and I'm just so happy about it. And what beautiful work. So I just I have to wax poetic about you guys. <laughs> and Lita, oh wow. Um, okay, I'm going to read. So I'm going to give you just the slightest background. At 38 years old, my beloved, intelligent, wonderful husband went down and almost died. And it was, it was a really difficult thing. And he loves birds. And that was like his, he couldn't talk for years. It couldn't be touched. We, it was just very intense. But we have birds in our yard and he just loves them so much. So if bird, you would be my loon calling long past light, my morning dove, my sweetest finch flashing sun from blackest night. If my bird you were, I'd feed you nectar from my palm and plant thick trees for you to rest and nest until I could transform my arms and hands to feathered limbs, our hearts remade as song. Thank you so much. Oh, so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Are you ready, True? Unmute. No sound. Unmute yourself. Are you good, True? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so much love being shared, just with what I've heard so far. And your faces and everything, it's just feeling like, all the loneliness that's happened and all the pain that's happened and all the grief that's happened. It's just like we're coming in. Oh, good. It's just lovely. Just lovely. And uh, the, 
fact that the, that's just not the, it's like you're going through the, one of these poems I, I was calling string theory, but then it came out, immediately went to spring theory. And uh, my progression has been, this is the fifth poem that I've got, that I was absolutely going to read to you. And so I'll just will. And the other one was about um, uh, the girls all getting dressed to go to a party and the boys are next door and they get all up in the way girls do about being in love. And they then have the last part thing says, um, she walks off with this boy into her life. And for him, the, she felt like a beautiful seed going to the earth. And he was like a... a rock going to the anyway that was an interesting poem and then when you said the one so you said the one about uh the birds and how you felt about the birds i they have recently found for me the redwoods and i don't know if you know but it's a place that has a marsh and lots of birds and i'm sitting here with a window looking out over it and it's very beautiful and there's a lot of illness going on around here. And so it's just, I'm, this poem is called, Is Beauty a Color or a Sound? So give me clean birds who soar and look ahead, who can hear the call of beauty. Hologram birds, metaphor birds, who rise like a phoenix from the ashes when there's been neither fire nor story. Give me birds who have experienced being beautiful by flying with other birds, with hummingbirds with crimson breasts, with owls who keep death clean. Give me birds who would never go near a coal mine or enter a neighbor's cage. What bird is meaner than a seagull, more selfish? Yet I do remember how the dove found a sprig of laurel and flew me into clarity. Oh, okay. Thank well, you. You guys, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. So our next reader is Steve Stein. I'm gonna bring you up, Steve. Steve. Ah, oh, there he is. All right. Well, I am privileged to be the husband of uh, Gabrielle Rillo. And uh, our journey started 40 years ago when the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen walked into my office and uh, uh, that was the magic. Uh, Gabby's given me the gift of, of, of love and caring and a wonderful family. And I, I acknowledge Seth and Suzanne and, and grandchildren, Gabrielle is on watching this too. Uh, I thought of long and hard about what gift to give Gabby at the, uh, for Valentine's Day. I don't usually speak. I did once before recite a poem. One of the people in the library turned to me and said, go on, Steve, here's a poem. Why don't you go read it? But I hadn't, cho hadn't actually chosen that poem. So this time what I've done, because I'm not a poet, I love hearing poetry and I love Gabby and, and her colleagues' poetry. But I went to the uh, internet and did a search and I found a poem that I'm going to read by E.E. E. Cummings. Ooh. And uh, I was not familiar with E.E. E. Cummings, except I knew from, I guess, from college that he didn't use punctuation. <laughs> but I didn't know really much about it. So this poem is titled, I Carry Your Heart With Me. I Carry It In. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant and whatever a sun will always sing to you. 
Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. Oh, so, uh, yes. I love you. <laughs> Beautiful. Really. <laughs> Lovely. So our last sign up was Peter Butler, but I don't see him online. So. So if anybody else would like to read, just raise your hand and I'll, I'll we'll spotlight you. In oh, the there's Margaret. Yes. Hi, Margaret. Uh, Margaret. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. If you've been to the in-person readings of the past, I used to love to be my mother, Doris. And this poem is for her. Uh, it's called The Last Time My Mother Made Valentines, I Received Three. Already, difficulty choosing colors, designs, straining to compose witticisms that once were second nature. The blank cards numerous, vast, her mind contracting, options vanishing. Mom's inscription, still a fine filigree, a blooming vine to my bare scrawl. Her dress book in shambles, so I became assistant. At times, I judge worthiness of recipients, grudgingly licking flaps, pressing stamps at the corners of envelopes. I'd say, let's put away the glitter ribbons, but her output kept increasing with repeats she'd insisted weren't sent arguing against my logic, my ignorance. I didn't know how forgetting recalibrated love's ledger lent credence to complete forgiveness. Instead, I called it confusion. I didn't comprehend the final flowering, profuse, the essence of her passing. Love you, mommy. <laughs> Very nice. Here, I'm going to bring up Marisa. Okay. Oh, Marie. Hello, Marie. Hi, Hi there. Hi. Okay, hey. let's get it. I have something right on my screen saying unmute yourself. I'm already unmuted. Um, it's so good to see everyone. And thank you all for your beautiful poetry. Um, the only way I could do like a one minute poem is to read something by someone else. Yeah. And um, so I found a poem by Federico García Lorca, um, which is surprisingly not about blood and death, but <laughs> um, it is called, and I'm going to read it in Spanish and then in English, Variación. El romance, el romanzo del aire, bajo la rama de eco. El romanzo de agua, bajo fronda de luceros. El romanzo de tu boca, bajo espesura de besos. Variations. The still waters of the air under the bow of the echo, the still waters of the water under a frond of stars, the still waters of your mouth under a thicket of kisses. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Lovely. Good to see you, Marie. Yes. Yeah. So is there anybody else who would like to read or Gary? Okay, I'm gonna bring it up to the top here. And then, oh, there you go. 
Okay, can, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, good. Yes, yes. good. Uh, I had no intention to uh, do any reading. Uh, I was really enjoying all of the, the recitation. And um, when it came time to have uh, a chance to do something myself, I thought, well, there's a song that I wrote for my wife uh, when I met her. I didn't have much money. We met about 38 years ago. Um, and I knew it was her birthday coming up in less than a week. So I, I decided, well, I play the guitar and I sing, so I'll, I'll, I'll write her a song. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, all the songs I had written before were all about the lonely path down the road of life. <laughs> uh, this was the first one that I wrote um, that was really a love song. So I'm just going to recite it. Um, Hopefully I don't need to read it because I know it. It goes, in the stillness of the morning, I see you in a vision. The sadness in your brown eyes reminds me of my pain. And then I hear your laughter, see the child that lives within you, dancing in the firelight to the music of the rain. The strength I feel around you is the softness that you give me as the sun pushes the clouds away and the dawn becomes the day. The center to your feeling, the voyage through your sorrow has led me on this journey to seek a better way. You have opened up your life to me, one who dares to love you, trusted in my heart song and listened to my rhyme. And my world is filled with gladness to be part of that sweet circle of endings and beginnings along the path of time. That's it. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Laurel. Anybody else would like to read or? I don't, I'm not seeing any more hands. So I thank you all for joining us today. Um, and I think it's time for Froggy, right, Gabby? Okay. <laughs> Here's our little Froggy. And we, what, what, what Franklin is going to do, you know, when we do this for the 18 years that we've been doing this reading at the Larkspur Library, um, and we have had a few people singing uh, as well, uh, but what we always leave with a song we've been doing. The song we've been doing is Let Me Call You Sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> so um, we have our little froggy who sings Let Me Call You Sweetheart, and we invite you, uh, Frank, who's going to post up the, the lyrics so we can, as we say goodbye for this this gathering and thank you all for sharing your work and uh, thank you for the library again we'll sing uh let me call you sweetheart oh and and franklin you said you were going to post about how people can get the anthology if they want to and um and also i think that this is recorded so if people didn't get to you know if they have friends who'd like to go to the reading they can go somewhere and find it yeah on the, on the library I'll be actually sending up a follow-up email to everybody who registered for today. So you'll get an email with a link to the recording as well as to where you can buy the anthology online. And, and then, some of that's going to the proceeds are going to the library, 50%. Yeah, to the friends library. And then let me get this little thing up if I can find it. <laughs> Trying to share the actual little video so you guys can sing along. My dog got it.